Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. Welcome back for another quick update on the 120 gallon reef. Now let's jump right into it. You know, I'm going to go through all of the things I've experienced with these rashes over the last nine or 10 months. You know, which ones are reef safe, which ones fight, and most importantly, you know, what you may be able to do in your system if you're thinking about adding these guys. So I did the liberty of ranking these guys from safest to the most dangerous in my system based on my own experience. So let's go ahead and get to it. So coming in at number eight, it's going to be the tricolor furry ras. Tons of color and also very, very cheap. I believe it was only 20 or 30 bucks at the LFS. Definitely reef safe. Open water swimmers. Does a great job of, you know, giving me that splash of color without giving me that traditional furry ras swimming pattern, which I really hate to look at. So highly recommend them. So coming in at number seven, it's going to be the scarlet pinstripe ras. New addition, only been in the tank a couple of weeks. Very skittish, but also very colorful and beautiful. Gives me a red pink color in the system that I don't have anywhere else. And it's also a reef safe fish. So this is actually the last fish in my system that's classified as reef safe. So coming in at number six, it's gonna be the paddlefin ras. Added this guy a few months ago, and I can't wait for my juvenile to show this mature male coloration. But for now, I get to enjoy this guy swimming around the tank, very active, never bothers anything. So I would consider these reef safe as well and a welcome addition to any tank I add in the future. Coming in at number five, it's gonna be the Radiant Ras, also known as the Iridus Ras, depending on what part of the world you're in. But either case, very beautiful fish. Gotta tell you guys, it's probably one of the favorite rasses I've ever owned to date. And I waited almost a full 10 months before it was available on Live Aquaria. You know, had them send me one that was full grown. Unfortunately, it arrived in bad shape, didn't make it. But the second fish they sent me has been doing well in the tank. So far, no major issues that I've noticed as far as it being aggressive or eating invertebrates. And by all accounts, it appears to be reef safe, but the verdict's still out on this guy. And coming in at number four, and also starting, you know, the top four most dangerous rasses in my system has to be the yellow chorus ras. Now this guy's a very beautiful fish, very common. You can find them almost anywhere. And they grow to be about six or seven inches, I believe. So far, this guy's been a pretty model citizen. You know, he is opportunistic. If there's something flipped upside down, he'll definitely investigate, but he's not actively hunting anything yet. Now the third most dangerous ras in my system has to be the Melanaris ras. You know, it's still classified as an opportunistic feeder, at least from what I've noticed, but I've also noticed a lot more digging in the sand and a lot more interest in my cleanup crew members. So, you know, we shall see how this plays out, but for now, all is good. Now coming in at number two, it's gonna be the Jade ras, also known as the Green Chorus ras. Very beautiful fish. Pretty much the green version of the yellow ras I shared earlier with you guys. But this guy here lately, the bigger he gets, the more aggressive he's getting, and the more interested he's getting in my snails and cleanup crews. So, verdict's still out. If he's reef safe or not, I'll keep you guys posted. And last but not least, the number one rated dangerous ras in my system has to be the bluehead ras. First purchased this guy, you know, based on his color pattern and the way it looked, I was like, it's gonna be a beautiful fish. Did not know that I was adding a scary efficient killer into my system. I've witnessed him kill cleaner shrimps, hermit crabs, snails, you name it. I've watched him do it. So I'll tell you what, would not recommend this fish at all to anyone that's interested unless you're going fish only and you definitely don't have any interest as far as having a cleanup crew. Now, for anyone that's new, you may be curious, you know, why do you even have these rasses? What's the point if they're just going to kill all your, you know, your cleanup crew? Well, guys, it's only some of the rasses that do that. A majority of the rest serve a very important role in my tank, and it's called pest control. You know, I'm doing everything I can to dip my corals and, you know, prevent anything bad from getting in my system, whether it's bugs or, you know, bristle worms or whatever the case may be. These guys actively hunt and kill and eat all of those things. Not only that, they inspect every single coral that I put in the system, and they are very important as far as the long-term success of this tank, in my opinion. Now, no matter what reef tank you have, rasses or not, you're always fighting the battle of attrition. You know, your cleanup crew is gonna turn over, whether it's killing themselves or fish killing them, whatever the case may be, you're gonna have to replenish it eventually. Now, in my system, I try to do this every few weeks, and I normally do this at night when the rasses are sleeping, but in this case, hey, it's a ras video, 
why not give you guys a live tutorial of what happens when you add something during the day. Now unfortunately, Peppermint Shrimp, he was actually already dead when I added him to the system, but you guys see what would have happened even if he was alive. Bluehead took him out immediately. Now the very interesting part was what happened after that. You guys notice almost every wrasse in the system comes and checks out the snails, the hermits, whatever I added, except the furry wrasse and the scarlet pinstripe wrasse. So everything's turned out to be true. You know, everything that's reef safe with caution showed interest and everything that's technically reef safe did not. So for as far as I can tell, you know, my rankings are accurate. And the good news is guys, all these cleanup crew members actually hid in their shells and survived until the night. So even with all that being said, I've still been able to keep invertebrates in the tank. I actually have two cleaner shrimp, two fire shrimp, a solid lightfoot crab, and a reef lobster in this system. And I found the difference between success and failure was based on the size of the shrimp. If I bought something small and bite size, it wouldn't make it. And the larger shrimp have done fine. So it looks like there still is a way to do both, at least for now. I'll keep you guys updated if it fails. You know, with a tank full of all of these omnivores and carnivores, you know, tangs, wrasses, shrimp, blennies, everything in between, the best way to curve their aggression and their want to kill my cleanup crew is to simply keep them fed. You know, these fish crave protein. They crave food all the time. So the more I can keep them full of, you know, LRS, Refrenzy Nano, the frozen food, or mysis shrimp, or even the PE mysis protein flake food, the less likely they are to fight each other and to go after my cleanup crew members. So believe it or not, you know, even when I introduce the Tang's food as far as nori or, you know, algae flakes, whatever the case may be, the wrasses even eat that too. So these guys are getting a healthy diet, a mixed diet of all different types of food. And I really think that's the difference between those shrimp staying alive and dying in my system. So at this point, I know a lot of you all may be curious as far as how do the wrasses get along? You know, do I have aggression issues? Do the other fish like the wrasses? So let's take a moment, get a good look at the tank, and talk a little bit more as far as my experiences with these fish. Now, if I was to describe this tank in one word, peaceful would definitely be far from the truth. I would look at this tank and say it's more of a constant sense of tension. You know, not really a bad tension, but an entertaining tension. Meaning I don't know if the wrasses are going to do something crazy to my cleanup crew, or I don't know if they're gonna fight each other because they do fight all the time. And it's more specific to the wrasses that are the same family or genus, I guess you wanna say, whether it's the yellow chorus wrasse and the green chorus wrasse chasing each other, or surprisingly, the blue head and the paddlefin wrasse. They all go at it. Specifically, those four wrasses fight each other. Now, the pinstripe wrasse and the tricolor fairy wrasse go at it, and then the radiant wrasse he just kind of minds his business and he may take on, you know, the blue head or whatever the case may be. So, you know, it really seems like the aggression is more of a, I chase you, you chase me. And then we go back to hunting our food. Now, the funny part is, it's not just the wrasses. The tangs usually get involved in this, specifically the powder blue chasing the blue head ras. He literally hates that guy. He'll chase him around the tank, you know, 20 laps and then leave him alone. And I've also noticed that Tamini Tang do the same. You know, he'll chase the blue hair, the yellow rise, the green one, the radiant. He really doesn't care. If he gets in a bad mood, he'll just chase anyone. But overall, you know, I'm really happy with the way things are turning out in the tank. There is some aggression, but it's nothing more than, you know, a little slap here and then going on about your business. So overall, I think multiple rats in the tank can work if you have enough to help spread the aggression out and you keep them fed. Now, just in case anyone's new, very important that you do a little research before you purchase any of the wrasses I have in this system because some of them need different things. For example, the Melanaris wrasse, the Chorus wrasse, the Radiant wrasse, all of those guys require some kind of substrate to bury themselves in because that's how they sleep at night. That's where they go when they're stressed out. And fish like the Bluehead wrasse or the Furry wrasse or the Pinstripe wrasse, those guys had in the rock work. You know, they sleep inside the rock or caves and nooks and crannies. So those are wrasses that you may be able to introduce into a bare bottom system. So just make sure that before you get the wrasse, you understand what it needs as far as substrate or no substrate, you know, how it sleeps at night, what it eats. And last but not least, what's the max size of the fish? 
you know, when it's full grown, is your tank gonna be big enough? I try to make sure all the rasses in this system are gonna max out no more than seven or eight inches because I have no plans on upgrading this tank later down the road. There are beautiful rasses out there that grow to be one or two feet long, so don't fall in the trap of buying a beautiful juvenile only to have a full grown monster in your tank, you know, a few years later. So at this point, it's time to go ahead and end this video and get on out of here. I'm hoping that I was able to answer some of the general questions you guys may have had as far as the rashes in my tank and my experiences thus far. But I am curious about one thing. Based on experience, what was the most dangerous rash you've ever kept in your system? Maybe we can have an unofficial hit list as far as rashes to avoid down in the comments. So other than that, as always, hey, you guys can like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy. Happy reefing.